Hello and welcome back to our tutorial. Today we'll be doing digital input. Today's topic is actually slightly harder than what we have done so far. So make sure that you are paying attention in today's topic because it will be very useful in up a few upcoming tutorial. So without further ado, let's go in and change our exercise name to exercise 3.3. Today we'll be testing something called digital input, which means you'll be using Arduino to read digital input. So you will need a breadboard as well. This time we will need to use both ground, okay, which is in black color, and 5 volt as well. So we'll connect 5 volts over from here. The reason why I didn't put the breadboard at the bottom is because will be do doing digital input as well. So this digital doesn't have to be output all the time. Last time when we are when we're doing all of our code, it will output, which means it will be providing electrical current, okay? which, is, um, which is the same as providing electrical voltage. So basically it will provide electricity out from these digital ports. But digital ports is not only limited to providing output, it can be used to read input as well. So this is our focus today. Before we read any input, we need to set up the input first. And the way we do it is, we try to use button. Let's say we put a button over here. Okay, and then now we need to give it some power source. So this line will give power to this button, but it won't go through unless you press it. Now we will connect the other side directly to one of the digital port. Okay, this way we can use that digital port to read whether the button is pressed. Because when you press the button, the power will go through all the way through this button to go back to number 7. But for using button to do digital input, we will need to add in one more thing, that is the resistor. We need to make it 10 kilo ohm. This resistor is called pull up resistor because it will actually attract any unstable electric current in our surrounding. So you need to put it on an, um, the leg where it's connected to the digital port and then bring it back to ground. So this way we won't have any interference when we are checking whether the button is pushed. Now, this is how you set up the button for pushing. But because we won't be able to see anything else physically, so we'll need to set up another thing. That is our resistor and LED, so that we can see if there's any changes. So let's say if I put a resistor over here, and remember that resistor for LED is 200 ohm. Now another resistor, I'll put it over here. You can change it to any color you like. Okay. Connect the resistor into any ports. For example, you can connect it to port 3 if you like. Okay, any ports that you feel comfortable with. And then another leg of the LED, remember that you just have to ground it. Now we have set up all the circuits complete. Now we'll put it aside and go to our code part. The code part is slightly different compared to what we have. To make this thing go bright, we can directly use set pin to hide. But because we need to do reading, we need to use input. Okay? But in order to do actually properly read the input and put it to use, not only that we'll need to read the input, okay, we'll need a way to process it as well. This time we'll use something called math. Okay? In your math section, there are quite a lot of things. The first one is for adding, multiplying, and etc., which is called the arithmetic operators. <coughs> the second one is called comparison operators. Comparison operators will help you to compare number. So what happens is, if you change it to equal, if you look at the size, the shape of the input over here is a round shape, which means we can put this round object in. If you change it to read digital pin 7 over here, put the equal sign over here, and 1. What will happen is, 
this one will tell the computer is true when the pin 7 receive electrical signal which means if the button is pushed you will receive electrical signal into port 7 and then this number will be equal to 1 when this equal to 1 it will signify to this green block tell it that it's true because this thing is comparing whether it's equal to 1 so we'll need one last thing to make it work that is we need to control it okay we'll need something called if what happened with if is that once you put in it will say if digital pin is equal to 1 okay which means when there's a signal into digital pin 7 then it will execute whichever code that is placed over here so what we'll do is we'll now put our set sorry not this one set pin 3 to hide over here now let's try to do it and see if there's anything wrong once you start it you press a button this thing will bright up okay but what happened over here is that it doesn't go out anymore it will stay as um, on okay it will stay at on and it wouldn't go off anymore so there's, some, there's still something amiss over here what happened is that because when we press the button it will turn on but when we release the button nothing happened because there's no other code that to turn off what we can do is we can actually use something else instead of just if we use if else if else will what will if else do is that when the condition above is not true it will run the second code okay when it's true it run this code when it's false it run the second code so we migrate everything there and throw away the original one okay what will happen is now when it's true it will turn it on so we need to just set another one when it's not true it will be off So now what happens is that when you press the button, it will turn on and when you release the button, it will be off, on, off, on, off. Okay, so press the button, it will be on, release the button, it will be off. Okay, so today conclusion. We can use read function from input section over here to read the digital pin, whether it receives electrical signal or not. Remember that digital can only be on or off. So it's whether it's receiving in um, big signal or not receiving any on or off. Comparison operators from math section, which is over here. These comparison operators can be used to compare two numbers. Okay, and you can put one of them as the read digital pin. Lastly, last but not least, the if function will be able to control the flow so that it will only execute when the code the, the condition over here is true which means we can switch the comparison operator into it and the last one if else will be able to give you better control because you can also define code to run when it's not true that's all for today thank you for watching and i will see you again next week